You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. Uh, first one being our, our fibrous tumors. If you want to take us through that, you can, if you want, you can quickly mention the benign ones. We don't really need to go into detail since we're really here for the uh, malignant ones, the sarcomas. No problem. So yeah, there's a whole category of benign and probably not worth getting into a lot of the details. Um, we'll think about the, the fibrous, um, the malignant fibrous tumors and those in general are the, um, the fibrosarcomas, uh, that, that appear in a relatively similar age range to most soft tissue sarcomas. So adults, right. kind of 30 to 80, and they present really similarly. I think one of the, one of the things to remember about the vast majority of sarcomas is that they show up similarly, right. They are these enlarging, like we said in the beginning, generally painless masses that are deep and big. Um, and so those are the, and we see that commonly with fibrosarcomas. Um, the, the most common subtype is uh, the undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcomas, which we, we kind of think about side by side with some of these. Um, and they, again, present the exact same way, aver- you know, adults, sort of sometimes older adults. Um, and again, with this painless enlarging, enlarging mass. Um, histologically, the two are a little bit different. Fibrosarcomas, uh, are the ones that we think about with that, um, the herringbone sort of organization. So you'll see the, the cells and the, the spindle shaped, uh, sarcomatous cells organizing themselves in that, in that herringbone or almost like a zigzag pattern. If, if you look at it sort of at a low enough magnification, you'll have the perspective to be able to see that the undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcomas in contrast kind of don't look like anything that they're supposed to look like, right? They're undifferentiated, they're pleomorphic. They oftentimes just look really crazy and really bad. So you'll see really huge mitotic figures. So cells that have, you know, 90 million chromosomes in them (laughs) instead of the number they're actually supposed to have from one cell to the other cell, right? There's a lot of variability in size and shape and appearance. And that's the classic presentation of an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. And, and that used to be called malignant, uh, fibrous histiocytoma. Correct. But that name has been, uh, that name has been retired. (laughs) Yeah. And so when we're looking at, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, so when we're looking at like the sarcoma, uh, sarcomas underneath like the microscope. One of the big things that we look for, like the spindle cells, right? Like the little, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I don't know how else to describe them, but spindle cells, they, they look like that's it. They're, know, they're elongated. Yeah. Elongated spindled shaped cells. And so like, that's the main thing that we should look for that. Let's know it's a sarcoma. And then we look at other clues to, uh, of the slide to try to figure out what kind of a sarcoma it is? Is that, am I thinking, are, like, are we thinking about that the right way as far yeah. as like, trying to get a diagnosis? No, you are. And and you want to look for some of the, right, some of those patterns, like we talked about with the MFH that, that we mentioned. The one thing you want to, you want to look for to make sure that you're not seeing, right? Because they'll throw that in on a test for you is the glandular organization of carcinomas. So things that look like they are organizing into, uh, you know, alveoli or, um, breast glands or, or clear cells of kidney tumors, stuff like that. Right. Those are not sarcomas. So sarcomas tend to be highly cellular, really dense. Um, you are certainly seeing this, the spindled cells, right? That that's the classic appearance of a, of a sarcoma cell. Um, but then you also want to look for the things that show you that it's a malignancy and high grade. So pleomorphic, uh, features, right. That it looks, um, that no two cells look the same. You want to look for mitotic figures. So, um, indications that cells are dividing really rapidly and that this thing is, is biologically very active. And then some of the patterns that, that I think we'll continue to talk about, right? Like the story form pattern of, of, um, an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma or that herringbone pattern of the, um, of the fibrosarcoma. And sometimes, um, what we talk about with synovial sarcomas, you see these slits in them, which is classic for those too. So, um, understanding and committing some of those patterns to memory can be helpful. Um, but oftentimes the test questions, right. Cause that's where, that's where I think residents get hung up the most is, Oh my gosh, how do I know what to do? Don't yeah. forget to read the test question. That's going to give you a lot of clues to help you narrow down what you're looking for. And then, 
you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference between something is benign that's benign and less densely cellular than a sarcoma versus something that's organizing into glands, right? That's a carcinoma, a metastatic carcinoma versus something that looks like sort of cartilage, right? Or benign hypocellular cartilage. And, and usually the things they give you are all pretty different on the test. So recognizing hypercellular, um, you know, a degree of pleomorphism or atypia mitotic figures, and then some of the patterns of the sort of the arrangement of the cells, um, of a sarcoma should help you get it. Yeah. And I remember with a lot of these, uh, like definitions, like stereoform and herringbone, like I had no idea what those were. So I had to Google what those were. And then, so you learn like two different things in one to try to figure out what they're talking about, but no, that makes perfect sense. So for this, just to repeat for the undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, we're looking for that story of form, or I guess they call it kind of a cartwheel pattern. Um, you looked at, at different, you know, mitotic, um, a lot of different mitotic figures, spindle cells versus when we look at a fibrosarcoma, they still have this, uh, the spindle shaped cells, but they're the, organized in more of that herringbone, uh, that herringbone pattern or that, you know, the kind of that zigzaggedy pattern when it's, when it's viewed on a low, on, on a low field on the, on the microscope. And yeah. You can see it the, a lot better at low, at a lower power. And the question, if there is a question, it'll, it'll still be similar, like, you know, slow, you know, mass that's growing. <laughs> you got it. And that's the, right. That's, uh, sort of the blessing and the curse of these is that um, the question on the exam has to narrow you into sarcoma uh, because, right, that no one's going to ask you um, the difference between treatment for a fibrosarcoma and a high grade undifferentiated sarcoma because they're pretty similar. So, um, what you really need to be able to do is pick out sarcoma from not sarcoma. Yeah. And that was, that was a, a perfect transition to. Just quickly, the, the treatment for both of these is, is just pretty much similar to what we were talking about, like wide, um, you know, wide margin, local excision. And then if it's large tumor, use radiation or do you just always use radiation for these tumors? Or I guess that, that's a good question. You always yeah, use radiation so for these? Or? Certainly tumors that are high grade and big uh, always get radiation. So grade plays into it too. Um, tumors that are low grade and small, less than five centimeters. Uh, we typically do not give radiation to, and then there's a, there's a gray area in between all of those, um, that our radiation oncologists who are at our multidisciplinary, uh, conferences, right. Discuss with us sort of the risks and benefits of, um, of treating those. And, and we make those decisions based on histology and a number of other factors, but big high grade, those get radiation, small, low grade, those do not get radiation. Perfect. 